In this lecture, I'm going to talk about why are we studying programming languages. To study programming languages will help you to choose a language. For example, what would be the best language for system programming? And what would be the best language for numerical computations? And what will be the best language for embedded system software development? And also, what is the best language for symbolic data manipulation and for network, PC, and web server development? And the language listed here in the textbook may not be the most up to date language, so I will not go into detail right here. Let's look at the next slides. We will have more coverage of the modern languages. For the modern real world languages, we have the network web server languages. For example, Python, Java, C, C Sharp, C++, JavaScript, Objective C, Ruby, and PHP. These are studio commonly web server languages. For mobile languages, we have C Sharp, Android Studio, Swift, Java, Object C, Visual Studio, C++. And we also have the desktop programming languages, such as these languages. And we also have the database languages, for example, like Perl, Ruby, on Rails, Python, PHP. These languages are specialized in database programming and the data analysis. And we also have the number crunching and data processing languages, for example, like Python, R language, MATLAB, and Hadoop. For hardware development, we have VHDL, Verilog, and System C. These are used for hardware description and logic synthesis. And for back end electronic development, we have EDIF. This EDIF format is very similar to Lisp. That's why I want to point out here, even though the Lisp language is not widely used in common programming situation, but EDIF is widely used in electronics and we call it modeling and device data modeling. And also we have nodal analysis language SPICE and typically HSPICE is quite popular. And in addition to this, we also have data representation languages or Sometimes we call it markup languages such as HTML, XML, JSON, and the CSS. And to study programming language, we want to make it easier to learn new languages. Some languages are similar. You can, so it is easy to walk down family tree to learn a new language. Concepts are very important. Concepts have even more similarity. If you think in terms of iteration, recursion, abstraction, you will find it easier to assimilate the syntax and semantic details of a new language than if you try to pick it up in a vacuum. Think of an analog to human language. Good graphs of grammar make it easier to pick up a new language, at least for Indo-European language. For East Asian languages, Actually, grammar doesn't help too much, but you can pick up the written system, for example, kanji characters for Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese. These languages are very similar in written format, or at least the phonetic parts. Right here, we will list down four different scenes that can help you to make better use of whatever language you use. First, to understand obscure features. In C, help you to understand union, arrays, and pointers. Separate compilation, varrox, catch and throw. In common list, we try to help you understand first class functions, closures, streams, catch and throw, simple internals. So these are the benefits for studying programming languages to understand obscure features. Second advantage is to help you to understand implementation cost. Choose between alternative ways of doing things based on knowledge of what will be done underneath. 
Use simple arithmetic equals. For example, if you use x times x instead of x to the power 2, this will be faster because it is a multiplication. And this one is a power function. It takes patient with long calculations such as Taylor's expansion to get it. Use C pointers or Pascal with statement to factor edges calculation. Avoid call by value with large data items in Pascal. Avoid the use of call by name in Ogle City. Choose between computation and table calculation. Sometimes table lookup is faster and computation takes longer time, but table lookup would take up more space or memory and computation will be smaller. And these are some examples of how can you estimate the cost. But, but we may have other issues need to be factored in in calculations of the cost. But at least right here, we point out one thing. To estimate the implementation cost is very important. Third, figure out how to do things in languages that don't support them explicitly. That sometimes it's suitable control structure in Fortune, but you need to figure out there might be some work around. Use comments and programmer discipline for control structures, lack of recursion in Fortune language or CSP. And then you need to have good practice in programming in these languages. Write recursive algorithm, then use mechanical recursion elimination. Oh, how to, even though some of these problems are no longer existing in modern languages, I just list down here. Basically, the point is to figure out how to do things that language doesn't support. Number four, we continue this discussion for unsupported features. Lack of name constant enumeration in Fortune. Use variable that are initialized once, then never changed. Lack of module in C and Pascal. Use command and programmer discipline. Lack of iterators in just about everything. Fake them with functions. Again, most of these issues are no longer existing in modern languages. And to study the programming language, we need to ask us these different questions. What is available in that language? What is not available? What is good and what is bad? And what is the use? Thank you. Bye.